ABC TV sitcom Saved by the Bell is Dustin Diamond. Dustin, come on up here. In a few of my previous videos, I've used some footage from an old event in the 90s, which every now and again some people ask, where is that footage from? Well today, I'd like to talk about what's actually going on in this footage, because it's quite a cool little story in itself. Today, we're going to take a look at the Sonic 2 launch party. I'm sure most of you have at least heard of a video game launch party. They're often held at the end of a game's development, as a way for the developers to celebrate the end of months and sometimes years of work and labour that they've been doing on the project. Some developers treat it a bit like a superstitious event, like how some ships get christened when they first enter the water. Without a celebratory drink or send-off, the game just won't do well. But some developers treat it more as a press event. They'll invite key members of the press, and sometimes even celebrities, to come to the party and help give the game one final promotional push before it hits the retail shelves. It's quite rare that members of the public, or even fans of the said game, will be invited to these events. But it does happen, and quite often there'll be goodie bags and even prizes given out if people not directly involved with working on the game attend. And regardless as to if there's fans there or not, lots and lots of drinking. Even if there's press at the event, the actual party itself isn't usually well documented. In fact, if you'd like an example of a launch party which is documented slightly better than others, you should check out the documentary Playing Hard, which is about the development of the video game For Honor. But I digress. Today I'm going to talk to you about the launch party for Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now for many years, this was a bit of a myth. People knew it existed because it had been mentioned in the odd comments and various interviews across various magazines and websites. But as to what actually happened at this event, details were a bit sketchy and nobody except those who actually attended it knew what it was like. But over the years, more information has come to light and it looked like quite a fun little event. And whilst I think a full look at Sonic 2's launch would be a fun topic for another day, today I just want to focus on this one particular event. And I think it's scientifically impossible to talk about this without providing some context as to just why this event was held in the first place. So here is some extremely brief context. The original Sonic the Hedgehog was released in 1991, and it was a huge hit both critically and commercially. It's arguably one of the main reasons why Sega became the market leader in the home console market. So when a sequel was announced and ready for release, Sega wanted to make the launch a big deal. Because back then, in the early 90s, games just sort of came out. There wasn't really much fanfare outside the odd magazine article or cover page, but Sega wanted to make Sonic 2 the first global game launch. Like I said earlier, a look at a worldwide launch for a game is probably a topic for another time. Today, I'm just going to focus on the actual party itself. The party was an invitation-only event. Sega sent out invites to members of both the gaming and mainstream press, as well as several invites to popular celebrities in the United States at the time. Mostly, these were people who were on popular daytime TV shows. We'll get into this a bit later. Thanks to Tony Takushi, who actually still has his invitation, we know what these invites now look like at least the cardboard sleeve that they came in. When folded up, you can see how the invite tells the guests to get ready for Sonic Tuesday, 24th of November. But what I like is how someone has penciled in the year 1992, just in case you thought, oh, uh, maybe it's coming out 24th of November, 1999. You can just make out part of the oil ocean zone as well. And when you fully opened the invite up, you can see Sonic running through the oil ocean zone and even the Sega logo. On the reverse of the sleeve, you'd see the main artwork for Sonic 2, which featured Sonic and Tails, along with the now classic Sonic the Hedgehog logo, and the words, He's back, and he's brought a friend. This was printed on the background of the Chemical Plant Zone, and you can just make out Sonic and Tails if you look really closely. So if you were one of the few lucky people to actually attend this event, what actually happened? 
The party was held on the 24th of November, which was actually the same day that the game launched, so it was a literal launch party. The first big visual impact that the event had was the inclusion of both the Sonic and Tails mascots. This would be one of the first events held in the US where both of these mascots would be together, and they were used to pose for photographs with some of the celebrities at the event. I've talked about these costumes before in my mascot history video, but needless to say, the Sonic head is pretty good. The body, however, is isn't so great, it clearly looks like a suit. Tails on the other hand is great, despite being so huge that it limits movement from the performer's arms and hands, I still think it looks great. There was a small Sage setup which had a huge Sonic 2 backdrop along with a Sonic 2 poster attached to a plinth, and on the other side was a TV stand with a copy of Sonic 2 running on a concealed Sega Genesis. Standing at either side of the stage were the Sonic and Tails mascot characters, and during the launch, a scheduled stage event took place in which Tom Kalinske addressed the crowd. The speech was mainly nothing more than the usual press release jargon. Kalinske spoke about how many units the Sega Genesis had sold, that it was the top selling system, and Sonic 1 had sold over 1 million units. During the stage show, Kalinski would invite some VIP celebrity guests onto the stage to play Sonic 2 and basically deliver a memorised script about how amazing they thought Sonic 2 was. First of all, I'd like to tell you this game, Sonic 2, is a blast. It is a total race, run, just have a blast, fun type of game. And if you thought the first one was good, where do you see the second one? All right, this is an 8 meg cart, which is twice as powerful, twice as fun, and twice as challenging as the first one. So, take the first one, double it, and you got Sonic 2. So who did they get to promote the game? Probably the most recognisable guest by far was Dustin Diamond, aka Screech from Save by the Bell. In the early 90s, Saved by the Bell was huge, and Dustin Diamond in particular was a popular character actor in both the United States and Europe. Today, however, he's famous for... other reasons. Jenna Von Oy, who at the time was another household name due to her role in Blossom, but her most famous role is probably that of Stacy from a Goofy movie. She attended alongside David Lasher, who appeared in Hey Dude on Nickelodeon. Joey Lawrence, who at the time was mainly known for his role as Joey Russo on Blossom, was also invited. And for reasons we don't understand, there's a lot of sequences in which he very awkwardly tries to explain on camera why Sonic 2 is amazing. Look at the difference. So she's, now this is the exact same board and we're playing here together, but she's at a different part of the board than I am. So it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. It really is. It's just, it's, it's something never seen before, really. It's great. I just love it. I just love it. <laughs> Home Improvement stars Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Zachary Ty Bryan were also invited. Jonathan actually got the best publicity out of this deal between the two stars. Whilst there's loads of photos of him from this event, including this image of him standing with the Tails mascot, there's barely any media of Zachary at the event. He barely appears in what video there is there, and the only photo of him comes from this old teen magazine. In the video footage, two stars from California Dreams also appear on stage. One is Michael Cade, but I've no idea who the other one is, despite his name being announced. To me, it sounds like they announced him as Red Dwarf. It's true! Listen! Michael Cade and Brent Gore from Cal Dreams. Michael Cade and Brent Gore from Cal Dreams. The celebrities posed for photographs on stage because of course they did. So one thing that you might have noticed is that the celebrities who are actually playing Sonic 2 are actually not that bad at the game. Well the reason for this is that according to the Console Wars book, the previous day all the celebrities were taken to Sega HQ for a day long boot camp in how to actually play Sonic 2 very well. I like that, just the fact that they didn't want to risk anything and made the celebrities go to a boot camp to learn how to play the game. Aside from the mascots and the celebrities, Sega also had a few other promotional items at the event. Denim jackets were so in during the 90s, and at this event, it seems that pretty much every single celebrity VIP was given a specially made Sonic 2 limited edition jacket. There aren't any 
clear images of the jacket itself, but fortunately from all the bits and pieces of photos and video, we can picture a really good idea as to what the jackets were like. The front of the jackets don't really look that different to a plain denim jacket, but this one brief frame from the promotional video, we can actually see that the reverse had a really cool sewn on Sonic 2 patch. But what I find funny about this is that whoever was in charge of getting these jackets only got large adult sizes because the kids and even Jenna have rolled up the sleeves and they're amazingly baggy on them. They clearly need a smaller size. Each jacket also had a Sonic 2 pin badge attached to it, and these pins are very easy to find now. They're not that rare at all. But another piece of merch at the event was this. It's only very briefly seen, and it's not very clear. See if you can spot it. Sonic 1. You had to come out with something better, and it looks like... Did you see it? Look at the woman in the background, just to the right of the screen. As she lifts her arm, you can clearly see she has some kind of promotional packet, which has Sonic 2's logo on the side, and what appears to be a large image of Sonic on the other. I'm sure that I've seen this item before, but I just can't remember what it is, or even where there's a clear image of it online. When the stage presentation was over and the photo sessions were all taken, several interviews were held with some of the VIPs, Tom Kalinske and various other Sega reps. There were also several pods set up which gave guests the chance to play Sonic 2. What I like about these pods are the cool Sega and Sonic banners just above the TV screens. You can also make out another smaller banner to promote the launch party hanging from the ceiling. So that's pretty much everything we know about this event. I'm unsure if it was the first launch party for a game ever. It probably wasn't, but it was definitely one of the first to have the idea of such a large media presence. It's also a really fascinating look at not just what appears to be a video game launch party, because very little has actually changed from most modern launch events, but also how cool this is as an incredible time capsule for the early 90s. Toys R Us, Saved by the Bell, Blossom, California Dreams, the 16-bit era of home consoles, all under one roof? This is the most 90s thing since 90s! There's likely to be more media out there in the pages of various teenage magazines, and from what we can see in the only video to exist, there are clearly others there filming and taking photos. This means that there must be more content out there from this event. If that ever turns up, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video on this sometime. But the story of Sonic 2's launch is much larger than this one event. It's a subject that we'll return to later someday. Until then, see you next time. If you enjoyed this look at the post 90 shock that was the Sonic 2 launch party, please click that like button. And if you'd like to join the Badnik army and be notified of when I upload new content, please click that subscribe and bell notification button. Or follow me on Twitter, where I also post updates. These videos just wouldn't be possible without the incredible help from my kind donators. If you'd like to join Team Awesome and further support the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Patreon donators get early access to videos and can even vote on future releases as well as other perks and benefits. Otherwise, please share the video with others who you think will enjoy it. But most of all, just thank you for taking the time out to watch the work I produce. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you.